Thank you so much for joining us on the Couple on Fire podcast. This podcast is for couples, for marriages, and for families within the Christian community. We exist to help break the stigma that happens within the Christian community. We're talking about divorce, we're talking about addiction, and we're talking about so much more. We believe that all this is possible in this life strictly based on the power of Jesus Christ and his ability to restore us fully. Let's dive in. Today, we are going to be talking about unrealistic expectations in your relationship. Now, we know we can have unrealistic expectations of a lot of things. In everything. In everything, but uh, definitely in your relationships. And it can really honestly be a huge, huge problem. I've seen uh, healthy relationships go very unhealthy very quick because of uh, these unrealistic expectations that we carry around. So before we get started, do you have anything you want to share, talk about? Get off your chest. No. <laughs> She's like, no, I'm right. Let's just dive Not into this. Not today. All right. So number one, we want to talk about I can change him or her. Mm. I love these ones. I, I love, love, love when I'm talking, especially to um, a couple she's typically younger couples um, when they're engaged or they're dating and they're talking about getting married and one or the other is saying, you like, yeah, you know, th they do this and I really don't like that, but I'm just hoping that they grow out of it or that when we get married that, you know, it'll go away or we can work through it. And I am always like, no, 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 no. Like, your partner is not perfect and they're going to have things that annoy you or agitate you, but you need to, when it comes to relationships, don't expect something that they do that annoys you or you don't like, don't expect it or think that it's going to go away because after you get married, it normally is magnified, whether it's psychological or not. It normally 90% of the people that you talk to, including myself, think that things just get magnified after you get married. Yeah, I think a big thing is, I think uh, when we get into relationships, women go into the notion that they can fix the guy, right? Stop him from doing the things that he does. But the man thinks that, oh, I'll, I'll fix her by showing her that I'm not going to change and then she'll have to change. And I think that's kind of the mindset of the guy going into the relationship is, well, this is who I am and I'm a guy and this is just the things that she'll I do get used to it. and she'll get used mm -hmm. to it. And that's still expecting her to change though. That's still an unrealistic expectation. One thing that I'd like to add to this about changing though, is that a lot of times guys and girls, they don't think that they should um, do the things uh, with each other that each other loves. And that is a big change, an unrealistic change. So I'll give an example. Okay. So let's say that, you know, Christy likes to sit and watch movies, right? Cause mm. she does, right? She really likes to sit and watch mm. movies. I have a really hard time sitting still. It's just, I don't know if I'm ADHD. It, it, it's annoying. It's annoying. Okay. There we go. It's not unrealistic, but it's, I am annoying. So it's, but I understand that as something that she really likes to do. Now she doesn't ask or want to do it all of the time, but I love her and I want to be able to change and alter and I do my best in every way possible, you know, to sit and try and enjoy that with her because she cares about it. Now it's hard for me and I have to be willing to change and be flexible in those situations to make that work. And it's tough. Mm -hmm. He's constantly having to get up sit down, get up, sit down, get up and see me. I'm exact opposite of him. Like once I sit down, I don't want to get up again. So it's I'll like a statue. <laughs> so I want to go around and get all the clothes put away, get all the laundry put in, yep. get anything done, vacuuming, anything that needs to get done. I want to stay standing and go around and get it all done and be able to sit down and sit down. I don't like getting up, down, up, down, up, down. I don't like, I just don't like doing that. But I think, Going back to these expectations, though, too, is one major thing is when it comes to going to church or being saved, mm. a lot of times in the in the circles that I used to hang out with and the circles that you used to hang out with, a lot of times if there was going to be a change when it came to going to church, a lot of times it was the woman yeah. leading, leading as far as getting the family to try to go to church. So if you're with someone whether it's male or female, if you're a male that's with a female or female that's with a male and you're the one that's wanting to go to church and this person doesn't want to go to church and you're thinking that you can just like, oh, we can just get married and eventually they'll start going to church with me, that 
you can't have those expectations on those yeah. people. You need to love and accept the person that you're going to be with and marry the way that they are. Yeah, everyone should be self-improvement. You guys can do self-development and self but both people want to do it. And when you're going in there trying to fix them or make them a certain way, uh, they just, it's not going to work. Like a lot, I hear about a lot of women that talk about men that don't throw their clothes in the laundry hamper. They literally will throw them on the floor in front of the laundry hamper. And me personally, as a female, if he did that, I would take that as a sign that he didn't care about me. Like he's not caring about my feelings, you know, and males just think, what's the big deal? Just reach down, pick it up and put it in. And it's like, just throw it in the hamper. He doesn't do that. Like if anybody was probably would probably do it in this relationship when it comes to that, it'd probably be me, but he doesn't do that. And I hear things like that about women. And a lot of times that's just a relationship that needs to sit down, come together. And like Josh said, you know, do things because you love one another, but it's also those little things that can drive your partner to the point of insanity that would require no extra effort really on your behalf. Like instead of throwing it on the floor, throwing it in the hamper because you love that person and you don't want to drive them crazy. You know, so I remember when him and I very first started dating, I don't know if he's even going to remember this, but we were joking around about stuff and we, him and I joke around all the time. If anyone hangs out with us, you know, we're constantly laughing and constantly doing something. And I said, so uh, we were joking around and I'm just like, yeah, punk like that. And he was like, don't ever call me punk. I just don't like it. And I've never done it again. Not joking, not angry, yeah. nothing. Because if he doesn't like that, I don't need to say it. And a lot of people in relationships would be like, what's the big deal? I was kidding. Like, I should be able to say that. And next time they're kidding or joking around or even in a fight, they would say it to the person. And it doesn't matter to me how I feel about that word. If my partner does not want to be called that word or have that word used towards him, then I shouldn't because I love him and I care about the way that he feels. Yeah, I- I was telling a group of guys this week too that, you know, relationships, especially when it comes to expectations, it's not a 50 50 thing. And I think that's what gets where the lines really get to be misunderstood in relationships is that, well, I'm doing my part. You need to do your part. And that is a false expectation. That's an unrealistic expectation. Mm. Relationships are supposed to be 100 and 100. There should never be, I should mm. never be doing something with an expectation that Christy is going to do something in return if I do this. That's an unrealistic expectation. I'm putting what I expect onto her. That automatically makes it unrealistic. Now, there's a difference between holding somebody accountable and saying, okay, you or know. being their parent. Right, right. There's a difference in all of that. But understanding that you can't change somebody, you shouldn't want to change that person, you know. I feel alone in my relationship. Okay, well, that's a communication issue. That's mm-hmm. not a change a person issue. That is, am I doing my part? And if I'm doing my part and you really are doing your part, you know, you can find some peace about that. You know, and I know that sounds a lot more probably trite than it should, but it's, it's, it really is that, you know, you can't change other people. You learn that through recovery. It's something that was really big in my own personal recovery is that, you know, I I had to remove myself from certain situations because I couldn't change those people in those situations. The only thing I could change was me. And when we look at our expectations on the world, I get full of these, I shoulds, right? I should, I should, I should. No, no, I have to have a realistic expectation of me and of my spouse, right? It's my job to do my job. It's not mm-hmm. my job to expect her to do this, that, and the other, or change. And I disagree with him a little bit. with, And I disagree with most people that say, I love the person that originally came out with um, relationships supposed to be 100-100. Like people were saying for a long time, relationships are 50-50. And then someone came out and said, no, relationships are 100-100. And at first, I'm just like, Wow. You know, I agree with that. And now being in a really healthy relationship and we've been together for a decade, I disagree even with that because you're, you're human and you're not always going to be giving a hundred percent. So on the days that he's only capable of giving 75% to our relationship, I know that he wants to be giving a hundred and he's burnt out. So it's my job to give 125 that day. The relationship should always be at 200%. And if you really care about each other, you're going to give and take and pull and push when it's your turn. And there's a lot of times when I'm only giving 50%, if I'm working and I'm starting a new job and I'm just exhausted, tired, he's giving 150% and I'm giving 50, but I want to be giving a hundred. That's the difference. That's the difference where it makes it, it balances out or all comes out in the wash because he knows that 
as soon as everything calms down and the dust settles, that I'm going to be back to giving 100% again. And it's the same It's the same thing. So that's the only thing that I disagree with that. It's never going to be 100. I really don't think it'll ever be 100, 100. We're human and we're always tired. It's going to be 105 and 95. Yeah, but it's know. not like you're, I like what you said though, because I, I feel like it's the same concept. So yeah. I th- feel like it's still 200%. Yes. It's still 200%. Yeah. So, and if you give 150 at one point and somebody else is not doing so well, you know, I mean, you want to give that 150. Yeah. And I think it's because of the whole concept of giving of all of yourself was really, yeah. you know, I, I like your analogy way better than, than mine. So, mm. you know, give all of yourself, whether that's 100, 150, 200, whatever it is that you got to do to make up the difference. Of Communication it. is key in all that though. It is. It is. I mean, it boils down to, and I know it gets over talked even in like relationship books and everything, but communication, if you learn how to be a healthy communicator, like, and, and, and that means in confrontation as well, like healthy confrontation where you don't get emotionally invested in your responses and all of these things. A lot of this stuff really starts to have an easier way of making sense. It, it does. Yeah, because it needs to be. And a lot of it when it comes to the communication, a lot of it comes down to the listening portion. So like if your partner's trying to talk something that's really bothering them, the other person needs to be healthy enough to receive and care about their feelings yeah and not get defensive about it. So really it's just, it's on the listening portion. Like if he wants to come talk to me about something that's hard for him, my expectation of him shouldn't be that he's happy all the time or that he can't come talk to me. If he, if I'm burned out or I'm running around like a mad woman and not really paying attention to him, he should have a safe place if it goes on for too long to be able to sit me down and talk to me and say, Hey, listen, you know, we're not getting enough time together and I should be respectful enough and love him enough to hear him out, really take a step back, think about it, and then acknowledge what he's saying and us together as a couple make a plan to fix it. And the dangers. Okay. This is actually something that's been a real struggle with me and our relationship. I know we're kind of branching, but I think we it's are important. Branching. I think it's important. Though. But it's part of expectations. Yes. There you go. I expect to be branching. So something that's really hard for me is I take it very serious about knowing Christy, like, I want to learn and understand her and be able to predict certain things about her because I know that if I do that, it really shows her how much I care about her and that I love her. Like it's, it's like the way that I love her. But what ends up happening though, is I, I, I actually get into a mode of, I really stop listening to certain things because I'm already predicting the outcomes of something. And I, and I, I forget. That's really going into number two. To listen yeah, it's true. And and I forget to listen, you know, and that's an easy thing for guys because us guys, we just want to fix the problem. My wife's crying. Okay, what do I need to buy or do for you to stop this right now? And 90% of the time it is, they just want you to listen to them. And that's really hard. It's hard. Because sometimes we just need to cry. Because sometimes you just need to cry, but we don't want that, right? Yeah. So we want to do whatever it is to fix it, make it go away, make it stop. And and that changes the real the, the expectations of the situation and stuff. And that's a whole other podcast. But okay, so let's move on to number two. Because that's changing him or her and the expectations of it. it. Is. They should know what you are thinking. You yes. should know what I'm thinking all the time. We've been together long enough. Mm-hmm. Right. I actually think that sometimes. I know. And that's why this one is more geared towards, I think, women. Because there's a lot of times I have learned a lot. One of my biggest growing things is um, being able to talk to him about what I need in the moment. So instead, a lot of times us women will be like, well, they should already know what I'm thinking. And then if I'm like, well, if you want something, ask him for it. Like, hey, I want you to come sit down with me and watch a movie. I don't, I'm not going to sit down and start watching a movie and then get mad and frustrated because he's not taking my hints. He should just know and come and sit down next to me. And then when I, a lot of women that I'm like, well, why don't you tell him like, Hey, I want you to come down and watch a movie with me. Well, I don't want to tell him he should just know. Well, I mean, that's kind of just counterintuitive to what you're trying to do. Right. I mean, you're trying to have a good, happy relationship. Or are you trying to have a combative relationship and just want to fight all the time? Or you just want to be a victim or you just want to be angry? Sometimes we get addicted to being angry or being upset or drama or chaos. And you need to be very keen and aware to that. So that's been something for me that's helped a lot in our relationship. I need you to tell me that I'm pretty more. I need you. You're not touching me enough lately, like adoring me, like rubbing on me, you know, loving me. And 
it can be hard because sometimes if I voice it too much, I'm being a nag and it can make him feel like all the times that he's trying, like he's trying so hard, yeah. it can make him feel like he's never doing enough. So yeah. if this comes to the communication too, like I need to voice what I want him to know to do and not just get upset because he's not doing it because I think he should know my brain. But then other times I need to make sure that I'm not being a nag about it. I don't need to nag every single day. He's a person too and has stuff going on and he might not be in tune with me every single day or want to touch me every single day. Maybe he wants me to walk up and touch him, you know? So it's, it's very, I think this one is more geared towards women. Well, I definitely think so. I think that, you know, when it comes to expecting men, we should understand, we should have a a proper expectation that our wives are expecting us to understand and know what they're thinking. And I think that really gives us an, an opportunity to then talk to them and say, hey, you know, I am a guy. I think differently. My mind processes things differently. Don't I use want an to excuse, care. Though. No, but I want to care. But if the if you communicate it often enough, they'll understand like, it's okay. You know, you can tell me these things. And then, and if your response is good as a guy to your female wife, if your response is right, then it becomes a healthy exchange. Now, it doesn't mean that it doesn't get tiresome. Okay. For either party. Sometimes it does. Like Christy said, you got to find balance in it, but we have to have healthy expectations of how that works. The woman needs to have healthy expectations on expecting the guy to jump in her head, but the guy at the same time got to think to himself, like, she's always expecting me to climb in her head. Well, are you really pushing yourself to really know and understand what she's, what is going on in her mind? You know, that's another thing that we just can't just expect, like, oh, well, that's just how she is. And that causes shutting down. That causes a lot of distance in your relationship. It can cause a lot of problems. So It can. I agree. True. Okay. Number three. Number three. They should know that I love them. Mm-hmm. I think this one's more geared towards men. It is. So uh, a lot of men will be like, they're so, I don't know. Okay. Don't get, I don't want to get negative, but (laughs) men will be like, well, I married you. You know, I put a ring on it, you know, type of thing. And it's like faces men make. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Okay. No, I'm a, have a very emojified face. We've talked about this. (laughs) Mm, I do. (laughs) So, but they should know that I love them is not true. I mean, if you have kids, it's, I think this is going to be an easier analogy. If you have kids, like you have kids, you think you tell them one time when they're one years old that you love them. And then you never have to tell them again. Like you never have to reassure them. You never have to any of those things. And your relationship isn't any different. Like you get with someone and the life, real life comes in and I don't, I don't think men are as vocal about it, but I think that the thoughts do cross their mind. Like you start thinking real life sets in, you kind of start getting kind of into habitual relationships, maybe a little bit of bad habits where you're sitting separate and things like that. And then you start thinking like, do they really love me the same? You know, I'm kind of put on a few extra pounds since we've gotten together or, Um, I don't act the same. I don't dote over them the same. Do they still feel the same way about me? Because the butterfly feeling eventually does go away, but then it's a deeper, ruder, like deeper root of a love that's just really adoration. Yeah. I mean, I tell him all the time, I'm like his groupie (laughs) that follows him around. Um, but it really, you should want to you should make it your competition to let your partner know that you love them. Like I'm annoying when it comes to it. I say I didn't get told. No, you're not. You're really not. I didn't get told. I can't even, I don't think I, I can't very, 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 very minimally growing up by anyone in my life that they loved me. And I think it was just something psychological that was deep seated in me that I like to tell the people that I truly love. I'm not one. I don't like the friends that just are always like, I love you. I love you. I love you. Like to anyone and everyone, because it's so important to me. I don't want to just tell anyone that I love them, you know, and the people that I do love, I tell them all the time, all the time. I mean, the, to the point when my kids are like, you can stop telling me my, 16 year old, I just ask him now every day. I'm like, have I told you today that I love you? And he's honest. He'll be like, no, 
And I'm like, I love you. And if he says yes, I'm like, okay. And I don't do it no more. But I tell him I love him all the time. Yeah. This was something that was really difficult for me because I also come from a family that's not highly affectionate, right? I mean, we say we, you know, I love you and stuff, but we're not highly affectionate. And I understand being in a marriage, how important it is that it's my responsibility to be affectionate. And that's a really hard, it's a really hard thing for me. It's gotten much easier. What's that? It is his responsibility. It is my responsibility. And I, and I can't have this unrealistic expectation that, you know, well, you know, the whole, you know, man thing, you know, well, I put a roof over your head and I don't punch you in the head. So, so, you, you, so that must mean I love you. You know, you should we know. We should be great in the bedroom tonight. <laughs> right. Yeah, Everything should, should be good to go. <laughs> yeah. Good to go. We're good. Right. And that's sad. Right. That's just sad. And it's, it's, we laugh about it, but that is the majority of relationships. It really sadly is. And it's, it's such an unrealistic expectation. And I'm not talking about like, I text you, I love you. Now that's nice. Okay. I'm not saying that's not nice, <clears throat> but looking your partner in the face, men, Look your wife in her face and s- and stop and slow down and say, I love you. Yeah. And it gives me butterflies then. I love you. Like, <laughs> I love you. It's not a phrase. It's it's a meaning. It's a passion. It's, it's you mean it. And it is an unfair expectation that they're just supposed to know. That is a cop out. Uh, believe me, I understand. I'm a guy, and uh, it's not. It was not comfortable for me for a long time. I had to get better at it and get better at it. And I still have a long way to go, but I work hard at it, and you can work hard at it. Hard at it. So, but it can kill your relationship. It honestly can, because if your wife doesn't feel that she's loved, and like she said, then you're not feeling it in the bedroom. Like, w- w- okay, why? Of course not, right? Like, why would you? And then that these false expectations, these unrealistic expectations, it just takes your whole relationship and starts chipping away at it. And then you realize there's no foundation left. And he, going back to um, they should know what you're thinking, for some reason, I don't know what it is. I love you. <laughs> Sarah, she's I okay. I do. Um, for some reason, there was, I don't like love you. I don't. I don't like Yeah, that. yes, yes. Um like when we're getting off the phone, him and I when we first got together, um I would be like I love you and he'd be like I love you and then we'd go. He That's how my family does it. He Well, to me, and I'm not saying everybody's like this. I'm saying I'm like this. It's easier for me not to mean it and say it like if someone said to me I love you and it wasn't someone like I don't hate them, but I'm not going to look at them and be like Okay. And be rude. It's easier for me to be like, love you. Love you too. You know, type of thing for some reason. And it not be as deep to me as me saying, I love you. And, uh, I, when I brought it up to him and I'm just like, you know, I really don't like that. I I really don't like that. You just say, love you. I really need you to say, I love you too. Or I love you. And he's always done it since then. And I don't know why. I mean, he could really be like, it means the same thing to me. You're dumb. And I'm just going to continue to do it the way that I want to do it. And you need to get better. You just need to accept it. He didn't do that. No. He's, it matters to you. It matters. And I don't know. I can't tell you why, but it matters. It's like someone sending me K. Okay. Do not send me K. Don't send anybody send K. Send me OK, OK, A-Y. Don't do that. You know, like. Do not just send me the K. The K to me means whatever, Whatever. you know? I don't have enough time to type the O in front of the K. So I need the I. Yeah. I need the I. Sarah goes, uh, Sarah goes, she goes, yes, Dan is that way. How can I fix the problem? So true. He's a great listener too, though, but he's always in fix it mode if something is wrong. Always. That is a guy. He's a good listener, but he's always like that. I'm always. I want to listen. So then at the end I can, I can fix it. And it's not because I'm trying to be a know-it-all. It's because I just want my wife to be happy. And I want her to be happy. And females are much different than men. Like, I can shove something off super easy where my wife is like, no, it's in, she's internalizing a lot of things at the same time. So it's different. They don't want us to fix it. They just want us to listen. So you want to know, I feel like he may not even feel that way, but mm-hmm. I feel like recently, we've been together for 10 years, and recently we even, and we're very, we... I feel like we have a very, very strong, healthy relationship when it comes to communication and we're not perfect at it. We still go through slumps where I'm like, I literally say in my head, I'm like, no, I am not telling him. 
I am not <laughs> like he needs to figure this out on his own, you know, and then eventually God breaks me down, you know, and convicts me like, should you be that way? And sometimes it takes a couple days because I'm stubborn and I'm like, no, he should know by now. But then I do. But we um, we rarely, rarely even get into any arguments or debates or anything ever. And we got in one the other day and what helped it was like a huge breakthrough for me he was in fix it mode and i just kept saying like you're not listening to me you're not hearing me and all of a sudden a light bulb went on over my head cuz he's like what do you need me to say so, to fix it and i'm like i don't want you to have a script that you need to say you know and finally this huge light bulb came on in my head and i said what i need from you is when i am talking to you when i'm getting this upset and I'm coming to you with something. I need you to look back, repeat to me what you I said and say, okay, this is what I'm hearing you say. I'm hearing you say, boom, 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 boom. What would you like me to do? Like, what do you need from me? And that was a huge breakthrough because what is um, the number one thing that they say people say is listening? It's repeating back to the person what they said so you could make sure that you understood. Because a lot of times we can say something or we can hear something and then the person says, that is not what I said. And they'll even use different words. And we didn't hear it. We didn't hear it that way. So he, a lot of times, if I'm saying something to him, will hear it a completely different way than the actual words that came out of my mouth. So if you repeat back to the person, this is what I'm hearing you say, or this is what I'm hearing you need. Is this right? Okay, now what do you need from me? It's a huge it covers so many hurdles of frustration. And I don't know why I never thought about that before. A lot of times I just kept saying, you're not hearing me. You're not listening. And he was, he was trying to listen in the way that he thought what I yeah. was saying. I was trying to comprehend it in the way that I was viewing it. And that doesn't always work. No. Mm -mm. Sometimes we have to go real simple, especially women. When you're talking to men, you have to break it down real simple. I thought you were going to say that the other way around for a minute. No. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Apparently not. <laughs> but you have to, you know, you have to break it down. Like the guy's trying to get to the end. We just want to get to the end. Okay. And a lot of things like we just want to get to the end. We're just, whoop, we just want to the end <laughs> and I'm not wrong. And, and that's the problem is that's what guys are like, Oh, let's just skip over all this stuff. Oh, let's get to there. Let's get to that and fix it. And let's just take care of it. Then we can move on. We don't have to worry about it anymore. And we can be done with this whole thing. And that's just not the case. That's so unrealistic. It really is. That's why like patience understanding, slowing down. And then I love what she says, you know, yeah. Repeat back what, what I'm hearing from you. Mm. Now we can have a realistic expectation of what, how the rest of it's going. She's like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa. Right. It's funny because Mark earlier goes, um, he goes seriously laughing out loud right now. Well, I married you. <laughs> I married you. I married you. Right. With the yeah. lip all up. Married you. you yeah. So anyway, um, you know, it's tough when we talk about expectations, false expectations, unrealistic expectations, mm -hmm. especially in marriage and relationships, friendships with your parents, your children. Yeah. When we put these crazy expectations on other people, they become unrealistic. Mm -hmm. We can expect certain things. Okay. But most of our expectations are so high. There's a quote. And I don't know it by heart, but I can get it pretty close. It's by Tony Robbins. He says, most of us expect that we can accomplish too much in one year, but we don't expect enough. We don't think we can conquer it in 10 years. And that's, that's how, that's because of our expectations. That's how our expectations work. We think we can fix everything right now, that everything can be good today. Like I should be able to just zip to the end and fix all this stuff. And my expectations are this. And then we forget about the long haul in relationships. We have to have healthy expectations so we can be happy in 10 years. So we can be happy in 30 years. We have to have healthy, healthy expectations. Yeah. And I think in this day and age too, what the issue is, or what's really getting blurry with it is the terminology that's getting thrown around a lot. And we use it because I believe in it is healthy boundaries. And people now are getting their false expectations that they're projecting on other people. They're setting that as a boundary. So it's like you're expecting this person to act a certain way or be a certain way. And when they don't, you say I'm cross, they're crossing your boundary and having healthy boundaries and putting unrealistic expectations on people are two completely different things. I completely agree. And you need to make sure that you are setting healthy boundaries. So 
that toxic or narcissistic or abusive mentally, emotionally things aren't being done to you, Mm -hmm. but you also better make sure that those expectations that you're putting on other people, that you're not being that toxic narcissistic person to them by the unrealistic expectations that you're putting on them and then trying to hide behind, well, that was a boundary and you crossed it. Mm. Boundaries are only for if it's going to be hurtful to you in a harmful way that that's it. So you need to make sure that you recognize that. Yeah. I love that you brought that up. I think it's important that we, we design things in our relationship to benefit it, not to hurt it or take away from Mm -hmm. it. You know, and boundaries should be for a healthier relationship, mm-hmm. not so you can have an excuse so you don't have to do certain things right. or, or change or, or change or, yeah, yeah, or engage in stuff. You know, so for the challenge this week, mm. you know, we really want to challenge you guys with speaking to your partner and ask them, ask them, what unrealistic expectations do I put on you? And, or a friend, a close friend. Or a friend, friend. yes, like a friend, a parent. the closest person in your life that you have. You should be able to have a healthy conversation with that person and say, do you ever feel like I put an unhealthy expectations on you? I would say, yeah, but I would say that every, you probably do everybody. We do it naturally. It's an unfortunate thing. We project ourselves on other people. So yeah, ask somebody that's close to you, you know, um, do I put unrealistic, honestly, do I put unrealistic expectations on you? And that'll give you an insight of things that you're like, okay, this is something that I need to change about myself then. You know, this is a healthy conversation to have because you want to take your faith, your family and your future to the next level. You have to be willing to grow and to grow. We have to stretch ourselves. We have to be willing to invite people into conversations that we feel uncomfortable with. If it's going to offer us insights and how we can change as a human. And that's the only way that we're going to change. So, yeah. And I don't like, I mean, especially when it's someone that like me, I try so hard to constantly be personally growing. I mean, reading the Bible as much as possible and reading personal development books and listening to audibles and having prayer time. And you're, I'm trying so hard. The last thing I want is for someone to come up to me and lovingly tell me where I need to improve. And that is prideful. And I need to be open. I'm never going to be perfect. I'm never going to be enough. And I struggle with that. So I put false expectations on myself Mm -hmm. to try to always be better. But then I also need to make sure that I don't start being prideful in the sense that I still, just because I'm trying so hard, not everyone knows if you're trying so hard. Not everyone knows that you're reading all these personal development books. And actually none of it matters. That only met, you're only doing it for you. You're only reading the Bible for you. God doesn't need you to read the Bible. He knows it already. So you're only reading the Bible for you. And that doesn't mean that you're still not going to go out and you're still not going to hurt someone or you're still not going to act a fool some days when you haven't had enough sleep or you're hungry. So you need to make sure that you're staying in tune with yourself Mm -hmm. and letting the Holy Spirit convict you and be grateful for that conviction because he loves you enough to be paying attention to you out of all the billions of people in the world to convict you of something that you need to improve on. Amen. Nothing else to say. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here for this episode, this throwback episode. We're so excited to be back as the couple on fire that we want to hear from you. Look, if you have anything that's going on right now that you want to hear about, maybe about personal development, about spiritual development, or about marriage, we want to cover that topic. Please either send us an email. You can send us one at josh at joshandchristy.com, or you can comment below if you're on that platform. We want to thank you so much for being part of our Our podcast, we've been doing this for almost three years now. We love doing it. We love serving other people. So if you have something that you're looking for, please let us know. If not, we'll see you next Tuesday at 7.